On the following slides, we are going to discuss the chemical and physical origins why colloidal particles can be used as emulsion stabilizers. An example of such colloidal particles can be seen in this electron micrograph. We see a bunch of 20 nanometer silicon dioxide particles. In the next electron micrograph, we see two oil droplets. These two oil droplets have been stabilized by these silicon dioxide particles. The particles form a dense crust on the surface of the droplets. This crust hinders two droplets to fuse with each other, which we call coalescence. Bare silicon dioxide particles cannot be used as emulsion stabilizers. Their surfaces are too hydrophilic. Thus, as chemical modification of the surface is necessary to make them become active emulsion stabilizers. We carry out this chemical modification by adsorbing small organic molecules onto the surface. The adsorption is possible because the surface is negatively charged. The negative charges can serve as adsorption sites for the oppositely charged organic molecules. The adsorption leads to the formation of a hydrocarbon corona on the surface of the particle. Now for the physicist, the chemical modification of the particle surface is accompanied by a change of the three-phase contact angle. The three-phase contact angle determines the position of the particle at the oil-water interface. Increasing amount of adsorbed organic molecules on the surface of the particle lead to an increasing contact angle. That means the particle becomes more hydrophobic or less lipophobic. When we now look closer at a particle at the interface, we can see that it makes up two surfaces, one towards the oil, a second towards the water. In the field of colloid and interface science, surfaces are always accompanied by surface energies. We can calculate the surface energy by multiplying the surface tension with the corresponding area. Now this particle has two contributions to its interfacial energy. One is the particle water interfacial energy, the other the particle oil interfacial energy. We can now plot the entire interfacial energy change of the particle by summing up these two terms. Therefore, first we relocate the particle outside of the interface, which corresponds to a contact angle of zero degrees. Now we immerse the particle into the oil. The immersion is accompanied by an increasing oil particle surface and a an decreasing water particle surface. Now we can see from the graph that for a given contact angle, the interfacial energy change of the particle is always positive. That means it is necessary to supply energy to the particle to make it immerse into the oil-water interface. Practically spoken, from this consideration we can see the particle would not immerse itself to the oil-water interface spontaneously. However, it does so, as we can see from the hard evidence from the electron micrographs. So, we have actually forgotten one important contribution to the interfacial energy of this system, which is the oil-water interfacial energy. We can similarly obtain this energy by multiplying the oil-water interfacial tension with the corresponding area. The particle blocks a certain amount of oil-water interface by occupying this surface. Immersion of the particle to the oil-water interface leads to an increasing blocked oil-water interface. This, in, in reverse, leads to a decrease of the interfacial energy of the oil-water surface. Now we can obtain the entire interfacial energy change of the system by summing up all the contributions and we can then see that immersion of the particle leads to an overall decrease of the interfacial energy of the system. The main reason for this is not the change of the interfacial energy of the particle itself, but the interfacial energy of the oil-water interface.